If you are D deficient, it greatly increases your risk of skin cancer and solid cancers as well. So ironically enough, yes, UV radiation increases your risk of skin cancer. Absolutely true. Vitamin D deficiency increases the risk even more. So if you cover up, you have to find a way to maintain your vitamin D. So you'd have to take more supplements or at least get half an hour of sun so you can maintain a tan. Uh, norepinephrine is often high when you're under stress uh, and high in PTSD, high in anxiety, high in attention deficit. Uh, we know that the green tea has a lot of theanine in it and that helps lower norepinephrine. It helps you manage stress. It really improves the focus and calming for people with PTSD, with anxiety, uh, and attention deficit. It's great stuff. Uh, all that chlorophyll and green tea, uh, again, is uh, just good for us because chlorophyll is so good for you. Uh, so you can brew green tea throughout the day. Don't worry about the caffeine. You can have a little bit of the powdered green tea in the morning. Uh, and it's very, very soothing. I give it to my kids and send them off to school. It's the best thing. The teachers are very appreciative. Uh, next. Okay, brain growth factors. Are, when I was in medical school, I see I'm old enough that I, I was taught the brain cells you had when you were born were all the ones you'd ever get and you just lost them. You could never repair or replace them. We now know that that's not really the case. There is ongoing repair and replacement. The brain continually prunes and rewires and reconnects. It responds to our, our environment continually. If we are not learning, all we do, are doing is pruning. We are not reconnecting. Therefore, you always want to be learning new things physically and new things mentally because you want to be creating nerve growth factors. Those nerve growth factors will help tell your brain to make new connections. They will tell your brain to make new myelin, which I really want my brain to do. Uh, so there's some things that we know that help with these uh, brain growth factors. It's very interesting that lithium is one of those things that really stimulates uh, nerve growth factors. That may be why it's the most effective drug we have at decreasing suicide risk. Uh, we also know that learning is very effective. And it turns out Brain Age, one of the uh, Nintendo DS PlayStation things, uh, it actually is very helpful at stimulating nerve growth factors. We're using that in our traumatic brain injury clinic uh, very effectively to help guys rebuild those connections. Anybody who wants to keep their brain in good shape, a little brain age every day, 15 minutes, will go a long way. So we'll do Sudoku puzzles, crossword puzzles, uh, learning a new skill, learning how to knit, crochet, tie flies, ju juggling, dancing, fabulous things. Physical activity, just doing things physically uh, will do that. Building something with your hands, walking, all will generate nerve growth factors. Very powerful stuff. Next slide, please. The gut in your DNA may be almost as important as the DNA in your own cells, which is sort of shocking. Over the millions of years that our lives evolved, the bacteria that live in our gut grew up with us, and we developed a very cooperative, commensurate relationship. The toxins, and they took the food we ate and digested it, and we learned to utilize their byproducts as nutrients to make our lives work well. And so, and we learned to neutralize the toxins, so it wasn't a problem. Then a few thousand years ago, we changed our diets. We quit eating green leaves. We quit eating lots of whole fruit. We started eating a lot more sugar and grains. And so a different set of bacteria started growing in our gut. And we didn't have this, the thousands and thousands and thousands of years of working out a cooperative relationship. So these bacteria create different toxins, different nutrients, and they're sometimes toxic to us. We know that some of the bacteria that are not infectious, they aren't causing invadingness in any way, but they're creating toxins that rev up our arthritis, an increased activity of rheumatoid arthritis, or of Wagner's granulomatosis, or of lupus. So it's not really an infection, it's a colonization, really. But our species isn't familiar with that species. 
Our DNA is not comfortable with that DNA, and it gets us into trouble. So the reason to give up grain can be independent of whether or not you are gluten sensitive. What, I, what I'm trying to tell you is your species grew up eating green leaves and brightly colored foods and protein. We didn't grow up eating grains as a species. And the bacteria that lived in our guts is different when you eat grain than when you don't eat grain. And as a species, you know how to live with the bacteria that are in the non, that are there when you aren't eating grains. You may not know how to live with the bacteria that are there when you eat grain, independent of whether or not you have gluten sensitivity. I will come back and talk more about gluten sensitivity. Okay. Now, the probiotics, uh, lactobacillus, um, and there are many, many uh, different uh, varieties of probiotics that will have uh, several billion bacteria in them, which is good, and you have trillions, trillions of bacteria in your gut. So the probiotics can help you re-inoculize your gut, but if you don't change your diet to the diet of the great apes, which is green leaves and whole fruits, you can't, you won't successfully recolonize your gut because you'll keep your, the building blocks for the foreigners are still coming through your gut if you don't change your diet. Next slide. Okay. So I mentioned that we have lots of toxins that we're exposed to. Uh, the best thing to do is try and go organic, uh, minimize your toxins that way. Uh, and you want to minimize your exposure to indoor pollutants. Uh, if, you're, if you're watching your money, uh, prioritize the organics to things that are uh, fragile, such as uh, fruits, berries, and um, meat. You can wash your vegetables, you can't wash your meat. Oh, uh, and iodine. Iodine is very important to getting rid of uh, the toxins. So you want to be sure that you're having adequate amounts of iodine. So. Uh, Sea salt, iodized sea salt, and uh, seaweed, best options there. So we can wash our vegetables, but they're not going to have as high of a nutrient quality as those that are organic. Absolutely. And what about local? Local foods are healthier too because. Yes. So the, the comment was we, we can wash our vegetables uh, if they aren't organic, uh, but they won't have as much nutrient content. If you need to economize, you get the most nutrient density for green leaves. Green leaves are your best nu nutrition for the dollar spent. Absolutely. Absolutely. And buying locally, the, so you can get the, get it the closest to the soil, uh, it'll be more nutritious and will have a smaller carbon imprint. So buying locally and supporting uh, the grocers that buy from local farmers, wonderful way to invest in our community. So I, I certainly endorse uh, asking your, your grocers where they're getting their food and encouraging them to uh, see to it we get it locally. Next, please. Ah, non-food things you can do. Uh, meditation and prayer uh, really helps lower the inflammation molecules. It's not all woo-woo. Uh, skin and massage will also help lower the inflammation molecules. That's not all woo-woo either. Learning physical activity, uh, I've already spoken about. Brain growth factor is very important uh, to stimulate learning. Vitamin D, get out in the sun at least half an hour every day. Uh, toxins, thinking about your food, thinking about the, the perfumes that you're exposed to, uh, thinking about uh, what kind of household chemicals you're using for cleaning, uh, and are you using uh, chemicals uh, it, indoor insecticides, for example. Mercury fillings. Uh, if you're going to go to the dentist, do not let them put in mercury fillings. I, I have several. I, uh, but if you have them, you have to think carefully about taking them out because removing them can release more toxins. You have to be very careful about removing them. Probably your best bet is to maintain nutritionally very healthy mitochondria so they can process uh, the mercury vapor that's coming off your fillings uh, more easily. Next, gluten sensitivity, celiac disease. I will talk more about this in the October lecture.